Hello again, everybody. This is the third part of our series of lectures of Doppler in ultrasound. And in this part, we'll talk about color Doppler, or sometimes called color flow mapping or color <coughs> color flow display. Or uh, and also we'll talk about the Doppler power angio or power Doppler. In Doppler color, color power Doppler, we'll talk about three parts. We'll talk about its processing and display, how the color Doppler is processed and how it is displayed. Also, we'll talk about its optimization, the settings adjustment, and the color flow in different hemodynamics. So this is here part 3A, which is talking about the processing and display, processing and display of color flow. And as you see here, I'm using the simplified illustration I adopted to use uh, to be used for the explanation. We mentioned earlier that we have Doppler shift, and Doppler shift is obtained by the demodulator in the machine. The zoom letter giving this information, the Doppler shift to the bidirectional Doppler, which is using the phase quadrature technology. Phase quadrature is responsible for detecting if this, if this Doppler shift is a towards or away from the transducer is it positive or negative <clears throat> and then this information including the direction and the velocity of the flow will be given to the digital display which is the digital part of the, uh, of the processing and this will go to the uh, color doppler and this is using what you call the autocorrelation autocorrelation is the technology used for color doppler so for the processing and display, we need to know that the main part or the main processor in this technique is called the autocorrelation, autocorrelation technology. So when you activate a color Doppler, what happens? You see there is a color, a color box and a color map. The color box contain many scan lines, Doppler scan lines. Each scan line is receiving a packet or a, a sequence of pulses, Doppler pulses. So what it, the autocorrelation is doing is processing all these pulses and correlating them to each other. And at the end will give me the mean or the average velocity for each spot. Each spot, we call it a sample volume. So again, each scan line is containing many sample volumes and is receiving many pulses, many Doppler pulses called the packet or the ensemble length. So what it, the autocorrelation is doing is processing all the Doppler pulses that are running through the scan line and then correlating each pulse with the next, with the next, with the next. At the end, it will give me the average of this velocity. That's why when you see the color is representing the average velocity is not the accurate velocity because it's a correlation of many pulses and as we see here the, the average velocity as we see it we don't need to have an angle correction arm or an angle correction cursor why because we are not representing the accurate velocity we are representing the average or the mean velocity if we want to compare the technology used with color and that used for the pulse wave uh, or the spectral waveform. Okay, we can tell that in spectral waveform, the technology used is called the fast Fourier transform and is running one pulse or two maximum, two, one or two pulses along each scan line per time. And this through one single sample volume. And that's why the, uh, the, this processing is accurate because it takes one pulse and display it. So uh, since it displays the accurate velocity, we need to have an angle correction arm, which is not present with the color Doppler. Okay, some important fact that we need to know about the difference in the fast Fourier transform and autocorrelation. Fast Fourier transform, as we see here, it can be utilized with the pulse wave Doppler and continuous wave Doppler. So continuous wave Doppler, what is technology used here is again the fast Fourier transform. But in the autocorrelation is used only with the pulse wave. I cannot use coloration or autocorrelation 
would the continuous wave continuous wave we have no image to be colorized so this is one thing to mention second thing because we are using in the autocorrelation we're using the pulse wave okay so uh, any pulse wave it shows what any pulse wave it shows range resolution or range specificity and also it might show aliasing artifact sometimes it might show aliasing artifact so as we know that we, we, since color doppler doesn't show me the accurate velocity so what is the practical or the clinical benefits of color doppler it detects the presence or absence of blood flow if you put color and you see there is coloration of a vessel you tell that there is flow in this vessel okay if there is no color this is one of the indications that we might have no flow here right besides other uh, possibilities but you might have no flow uh, it, it determines the direction is it positive or negative is it is it red or blue is it towards or away so the the presence of blood flow second thing the direction and the velocity of the flow third thing it helps accurate placement of the Doppler sample volume to obtain the spectral waveform I, it's better to have a color so that you can use the sample volume uh, of the spectral waveform or the gate okay although it's not necessary you can use it still you can use the spectral waveform without color but still color can help you for more accurate uh, placement especially if there is tortuosities or if there is any pathologies in the vessel and you want to put the sample volume uh, for the spectral waveform you want to put it within the flow right so this is a third application or a third benefit the fourth benefit it helps to have a, a quick uh, detection of any pathologies for example if there is aliasing you can see that color might show aliasing uh, turbulence turbulence of the flow or sometimes called mosaic uh, if there is a stenosis if there is tortuosity if there is occlusion all these pathologies can you, you can have a quick indication with the, with the glance of the color So for color Doppler flow display, there are two things. We have a color map and a color box. So as we see here, we have a color map and a color box, and we will discuss them one by one. So uh, let's talk about the color box. A color box sometimes is called the region of processing, color region of processing, or color overlay box. Okay, it's made of what? It's made of mini scan lines, mini Doppler scan lines. Each one of these scan lines is receiving a packet or a sequence of Doppler pulses. They are running and they are variable in number based on the situation and the manufacturer, but they are not little, little number or small number. They are uh, usually within the range of uh, six minimum up to 20 or more in some cases. So these are this number of pulses, they are called the packet or the ensemble length. Okay, so and, and on each scan line within the color box from this level to this level here or from this depth to this depth, okay, there are multiple uh, multiple sample volumes along each scan line. So again, we have many scan lines, each is receiving a packet of pulses and within the color box, uh, there is the each, each scan line is displaying its color along uh, many uh, sample volumes so as we see here if i put this um, magnify this is here a uh, color box so if i magnify it, this is here so this is a scan line and this scan line here it, it uh, harbors many but many uh, gates or many sample volume each sample volume of this is displaying the color of this part based on the correlation of pulses that are uh, processed along this spot and then the next one this one so uh, after the autocorrelation is processing all the doppler shifts and come up with the mean velocity okay it will form what you call the color box a frame as a frame so this frame is superimposed on the 2D or the B-mode frame. So again, we have a 2D or B-mode frame, which is representing the anatomy, while the color box is representing 
the color the velocity and the direction of any particle movement blood or not so any particle movement along this color box will be displayed based on what based on the mean velocity is not displaying the accurate or the peak systolic or the or the industrial velocities no it will display the average or the mean velocity that's why sometimes it's called semi-quantitative it's not accurate quantitative so as we see here this is the the like overlay of color on the b mode so this is here the b mode image this is a thyroid and this is the color the obtained in the color box so this is obtained by the autocorrelation this b mode image is obtained through the 2d uh, uh, imaging so uh, this uh, color is overlay on this uh, on this b mode image and at the end you will get decoloration here as if it is a superimposed or a transparent <clears throat> that is having the color on top of the bemo so we we finished the color box now we come to the color maps and the color maps sometimes called the color map a color dictionary or a lookup date table or color bar okay sometimes it uh, in some machines long time ago they use it as a, as a wheel so anyway all of these are displaying or giving you the code of the color and uh, what is the meaning of each color that you find in the color box so if you want to read the color box you have to refer to the map or the color bar or the color dictionary so uh, at these dictionaries or these color maps are displayed we have uh, two types we have the color wheel as we told you earlier or sometimes it display at the vertical bar so what are the benefits of this color map it helps to uh, give you the code for the direction of the flow and the velocity of the flow is it high velocity low velocity and in which direction so it will give you a color code by reading this color code you can uh, understand or interpret the color box okay what are the types of the color bar we have two types we have the velocity mode or the variance mode <clears throat> what is the velocity mode map this is the one that you, the everybody i think we all know it this is the one that it displays either on the uh, top right or top left corners of the picture it displays here the colored bar so we have here color bar that we have the upper part in the center and in the lower part so the it has three colors the red usually this is the 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 the, the red color that is usually in the upper part of the bar and then we have black in the middle part this black color displays if there is no doppler shift so it means that you might have no flow at all at this spot or there is a flow but is 90 degree to the scan line because we have the cosine theta which is zero so doppler shift will be zero so either way if you have black means that there is zero doppler shift okay so by default the upper part of the image uh, the, of the map it contains the red color and its different hues for example you have dark red uh, mid red light red and then you might go to the orange and then yellow sometimes and the, the the more i go away from the black i'm displaying higher velocities so this upper part of the map is displaying the flow toward the toward the transducer and with different velocities so if they have a lower velocity towards that will be here if we have a higher velocity that is toward the transducer will get the yellow color the same here that applies to the lower part of that the bar lower part of the bar it has again blue color and all its hues so we have dark blue and light blue and in between we have intermediate blue so this dark blue it represents what is flow away and flow away from the transducer and it is a lower velocity away from the transducer if the the vessel shows you light blue light blue means what means that it is away from the transducer but is traveling with a higher velocity away from the transducer okay so sometimes uh, somebody will say but what if i'm having an artery that shows blue okay it, it doesn't mean that red or blue doesn't mean this is an artery or a vein 
but for simplicity sometimes you might invert the color because if you invert the map you will invert the flow uh, display on the on the screen so if you invert the map when you hit invert what happened the blue will be up here uh, in the upper part and the red will be down here so whatever the color of the vessel it doesn't mean anything especially if you go refer back to the map that will tell you what is the meaning of this color but for some people might feel that it's better to have an artery in red okay no no worries if you have the vein in blue also it doesn't mean any difference it, uh, unless uh, uh, keep in mind that you refer to the color map that will explain to you what is the meaning of this flow is it away or towards so uh, as we just mentioned now if you want to use the color map look at the upper part whether it is red or blue okay the upper part of the of the, of the map it displays the flow toward the transuse and if the the light shade or the light head the light hue it displays the higher velocity while the dark hues is displays the lower velocity the black means zero shift either no flow or it is perpendicular to the flow and the lower part of the vessel uh, the lower part of the bar it is representing the flow away from the transducer the darker shade here it represents the flow away from the transducer <coughs> with a lower velocities and if you have here a light shade it displays the flow away from the transducer with a higher velocity so just a simple example here if you have a laminar flow or which is the normal flow parabolic flow in an artery what you will see you will see that that the, the the periphery of the vessel it has darker red so here and here and in the center of the flow you will see lighter red why because this is a higher velocity faster velocity and the periphery here we have a lower velocity or slow so fast flow will take the lighter red where the slow flow will take the dark red Another type of maps is the variance mode map. Variance mode is similar to the to the velocity mode, but it adds another color uh, code. What is this color code? It's given if there is turbulence. Turbulence means that we have uh, the Reynolds number above the 2000, so there is a turbulent flow here, and turbulence means that we have different directions so it's not parallel to the flow it has different directions different velocities which is chaotic flow or turbulent flow right so what happened here if you want to, to see the turbulence flow and use the, the variance mode it will give you different colors for example usually it's purple or green or like here you see yellow and green here so it is it depends on the manufacturer uh, application but, but the the one that is next to the to the velocity mode this is the variance mode so as you see here i put them separate a little bit so you can tell the difference okay but they are not uh, that separated i put here a line to make the difference between this and this so this is the variance mode that contains the laminar and the variance which is the turbulence so the very the presence of laminar and turbulent flow in one map this is the variance mode okay if you look at here the the left hand side one this is the the velocity mode and this represents the laminar flow if you look at here the left side is representing the laminar so it's easier to remember when you have l and l so l left l laminar okay so this is the velocity mode and the right one that is it will here uh, this this uh, show you the disturbed flow or the uh, the random or the chaotic or the turbulent flow so as we discussed earlier the color box and the color map can we use these two the color box and color map in determining or in knowing which direction of the flow is in the screen yes we can do that and there are actually two ways either i can relate the flow direction to the screen or i relate the flow direction to the anatomy i mean is it toward the heart or away from the heart okay so let's do it 
So let's start by detecting the flow direction and I can plot this in relation to the screen. Is it to the right hand side or to the left hand side of the screen? In doing that, we have to follow four steps. Actually, they are important. We can apply them to the color box with it. Is it in the parallelogram or a color box of a, a, a sector probe? Okay, so we can use these four steps. Number one, I have to imagine the probe, put an imaginary probe. Number two, I refer to the vessel and check the color of the vessel. Number three, I take this color and refer to the color map. And then I can, using this, I can plot the flow direction either to the right or to the left of the screen. So let's do that. So let's have example when we have the color box that is rectangular or parallelogram, which is coming from a linear probe. So imagine that there is the probe here on top of the image. And the, the box is steered to the left side. So what can we see here? We can see that the scan line is going this way. So the probe is in here, right? If I dr drop a, a perpendicular line or a vertical line, it will go down here. It will be where? Outside the box. Why I'm doing Why not here? Okay, because the scan line is going in this direction. So the probe will be in here. And accordingly, if I drop a vertical line, the probe or the imaginary probe will be outside the color box. All right. So this is the first step. P, probe. Second step, V, vessel. I go to the vessels here. I have vessel A and vessel B. Vessel A, what is the color? Is red. Vessel B, what is the color? Is blue. So obviously, they are different direction or opposite direction. So this is the second step, color vessel. So first step, P, probe. Second step, V, vessel. Third step, M, map. M, map, what I, I need to do here, I go to the map. So this first one, a red, okay? If I look at the, the map here, it is, the red is towards, because as we mentioned earlier, the upper part of the color map is towards, toward the probe. So this one will be where? It will be toward the probe, like here. All right, and the the lower one will be away from the probe to be like here. So again, uh, if I check here, the vessel A is red, vessel B is blue, and this is the the second step. Third step, okay. I go for the map like I told you, M map, okay. So PVM, okay, map. What is the map here? This is red toward the transducer. Okay, so the red here towards, so it goes this way. So it goes where is the direction will be where? Okay, will be the, the upper A, A will be from left to right. Okay, the lower vessel is blue. It will be away from the probe. So this is the probe, imaginary probe. So the flow will be where? It's going from the right to the left, okay? So the upper vessel is toward the right. The lower vessel is towards the left. Now, what if I'm having a sector probe? Okay, a sector probe will give me a sector image, either a sector with a point, pointed sector, or blunted sector. Either way, this is a sector. If you look at the color box of a sector, you see that it's not rectangular, it's not parallelogram, it's actually a sector shape. So it takes the same, almost the same configuration of the probe. So if I'm having here, a vessel that is scanned, being scanned by a sector probe. Okay, we look at here. This vessel, if you look at it carefully, you will find that it has two parts, red and blue. Okay, so if I go for the vessel, I mean the, the, the first step, which is the P probe, where I put the probe here. The probe will be in the center of this color box. Okay, why? Because if I put the, the, the direction here, if I have a scan line in this way, it will go here. A scan line here to go in this direction. So both are meeting in the center. Both direction here, scan line and scan line, they're coming from the same spot, which is the probe to be in the center here. So if I put the probe, I put it in the center. So this is P, probe, okay? 
<coughs> Next step, look for the vessel. Okay, I have here a vessel, the part of it is red and the upper part is blue. So it means what? The flow here in one direction, the flow here is in another direction, right? Red and blue. But let me see how it works. So now we, we determine the probe and we determine the color of the vessel. The third step will be the map. I take these colors to the map. Okay, so I'm having here the same vessel has two colors. Okay, so I will take the red color, it will be what? It will be towards. If you look at here, the color map, the red color is towards. So the flow is toward the transducer. This is here the probe or the transducer in the center. So the flow is towards. So the flow here, it goes from the left to right, right? So let me go to the second part of the vessel, or the second segment of the vessel. It takes a blue color. If I go to the M map, okay, and look for the map here, it's doing what? The, the blue, it, it is away from the transducer. So this is the transducer. The flow will be away from the transducer this way. So what I have here, again, from the left to right. So this flow here, that's the same vessel that the flow is going from the left to the right. Okay, it's easy, right? Now, what if I want to know the flow direction in relation to the anatomy? Anatomy means is it toward the heart or away? Toward the heart, usually these are veins. Away from the heart, usually these are an artery. So, uh, if I if I want to know if this flow is towards or away from the heart. I have to implement or have to use something here, which is the notch or the marker of the probe. The marker of the probe, you have it on your hand and you point it whatever the area you're pointing at, for example, superior or to the right side of the patient. Okay, so this is the marker or the notch on the probe. How it shows on the screen, it shows here on the right upper, sorry, in the left upper part of the, of the screen. So this will be here, the notch. I replace it here with this triangle so that would be easier to, to know. So this is here, the marker, representing the marker. And on the other side, I have the marker on the probe. I can direct it wherever I want. So imagine that I'm scanning the lower extremity where I put the probe marker in my hand, the probe in my hand, where I put the probe marker. I put it up superiorly, right? So the direction of the flow, sorry, the direction of the marker will be superior. It means that it is toward the heart. So in, if I look at the screen here, I can replace this part with the heart, with the triangle here. So if this is the heart here, right? So if I'm scanning the lower extremity, this is the heart. So this red one is going, as we mentioned here, it goes in this direction. This is the heart, so it will be away from the heart, right? So the, the red part here will be to the left, to the right side of the screen, this vessel is going from left to right, okay? And it is away from the heart. It means that this is an artery, right? Arteries are flowing away from the heart. And the lower one will be the opposite, of course. So this will be a vein toward the heart. This in case if I'm using this probe scanning a lower extremity. Now, what if I'm scanning the right upper extremity, right upper extremity, usually put the notch away from the heart. It's towards the right side, towards me as a scanner, right? So I put that notch here in this way. So the heart will be where? The heart will be here, right? It will be the opposite because the probe marker or the probe notch will away from the heart. So the, the heart will be here. So if I want to see here the flow in these vessels, imagine that or assume that I'm having the same color, the same direction here, right? So if I look at the upper one here, this is red. Red means what? Okay, is it like here the, toward the probe, the probe? The probe is here, okay? So it is going in this direction. So it is again left to right. But what if I'm talking about the anatomy, the heart will be here. So it, it is going to the heart. It's going to the heart meaning what? It's a vein, right? So now it is a vein, but it takes the record. If I'm assuming that I'm doing this in the right upper extremity. What if I'm doing the same exam here, but in the left upper extremity, where I, where I direct the, the probe notch towards me as a scanner, okay? So I, uh, the, the, the heart will be where? The heart will be here, okay? 
So again, this will be an artery and this will be the vein. So the interpretation or the direction of the flow, it depends on, first I have to, dis to determine it in relation to the screen and then check the, the uh, probe marker, the probe in my hand, the one I'm using, okay? Where is it going? It's going towards or away from the heart and accordingly I can put the heart on the screen. So it will be here or here. And accordingly, I can tell that this is towards or away from the heart. The vessels that are going towards the heart are usually veins. The vessels are going away from the heart, they are usually arteries. So in this one here, again, the probe marker here, right? So this is the marker. And imagine that this is in the, uh, uh, in the neck, okay? Imagine that this is a neck, neck vein. Uh, sorry, neck vessel, right? So this this notch should be where away from the heart because in the neck I put the marker superiorly, right? So the heart will be here in the base of the neck. So the heart will be here, right? So this flow here is going in this direction okay, towards the heart. So this will be a vein, right? So according to the flow here, it is a vein if I'm using this in the screen. If I'm using this on the lower extremity, what I'm going to be, it will be the opposite to this one, okay? So in summary, if you are scanning the uh, abdomen or pelvis or lower extremities or the left upper extremity, usually we, we put the marker towards the right side or superior, either superiorly or to the right side, to the right side of the patient. So the, the heart will be here in, in relation to the marker, it will be replacing the marker. I can put the heart virtually on the screen to replace the marker because it is directed to the heart. The marker is directed to the heart. Now, what if I'm scanning the neck or the right upper extremity? Right upper extremity, if you put the marker, it will be away from the heart. Same story like the neck, okay? So if I put here the, the, the virtual heart, I put it where? On the other side of the marker. It will be on the uh, right, right hand side of the screen. And accordingly, you can tell the flow towards or away from the heart based on where is the virtual heart on the screen. So as we see here, okay, I, I made this. So this, the left upper extremity, abdomen, pelvis, and lower extremities, all, if you put the marker, it will be either to this direction or to this direction. So the marker will be towards the heart. And accordingly, Okay, the, the, the flow towards the left-hand side of the image, it is towards the heart. So it's going this way. So this is here the virtual heart. And if the flow is going this way, it will be toward the heart. If the flow is the other direction, it will be away from the heart, it will be an artery. What if I'm having here the upper right-hand side or the right upper extremity and the neck veins or the neck arteries, okay? So it will be here. Where the notch will be, the notch or the marker will be superiorly or to this direction, which is away from the heart. So where did I put the heart here? Will be the opposite side of the notch. This is the notch or the marker, and this will be here the heart. So if having the same flow, I go to put it here, okay, it will be away from the heart. This is a vein, all right? So thank you, this is the end of part three A. Talk about, we talked about the color Doppler, its processing and display. We still, we have two more parts on part three, part three B and part three C. Part three B, we'll be talking about the adjustment of the color or the setting of the color and also the, uh, the use of color or the display of color in different hemodynamic situations. So this is the, this will be the color uh, part three B. And then we have part three C, which is the power Doppler or the power angel. So thank you guys, and I'm, I'm willing to answer. If you have any questions, please put the questions down there on the comments, and I, I will be have more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, and see you in part 3B.